My name is Rafi Garoyan. I'm 42. I'm not uber rich. I don't own a Maserati or a Porsche or even a Lexus, but I'm putting a car lift in my garage. And here's why. <laughs> When I was 18 years old in Maryland, I wanted a pretty cool car for myself. Most of my friends were driving Civics or, you know, your average Toyota, maybe a Corolla. But I wanted something unique. And I ended up getting this. 1965 Mustang. I bought it for just under $5,000 and uh, got it off a guy at a gas station. Took it to college with me and it's been with me ever since. The Mustang's been great. But when you're in a family of soon to be five people, you need more than one car. And having three can be a problem if one of them always has to stay in the garage and one of them is always gonna to have to be outside. When we built our garage for our house, we decided to, I'll give my wife credit for this, I didn't think of it, put in a lift door that would accommodate a car lift. So you'll notice that the difference between these two doors is pretty obvious. On the right, we have a standard garage door, and on the left, we have a high lift door. And so we decided, you know what? Maybe we'll think about putting a car lift in. It's not the kind of expense that you might think it is, because you usually see car lifts being installed by folks who have Ferraris or some huge, hugely expensive car. But in my case, it's just a $5,000 Mustang. But I want to keep it safe. I want to keep it out of the elements. And I, most importantly, I want to keep my kids from dinging it up with their bicycles, as you can see here. So uh, we've decided to put a car lift in. Now, initially we were gonna put a four post lift in, but we came to the realization as we started plotting out the four post on the floor that the likelihood of heads getting banged into posts and clutter around the car post was extremely high with a four post lift. Secondly, we are, there was some question as to whether or not we wanted our garage to look like an auto shop as opposed to a garage. So we stumbled on a single post lift from American Custom Lifts. And while it's much more expensive, almost twice as much as a four post list lift. It makes a lot of sense for, you know, a, a middle-class family who has kids running around the garage all the time and needs to keep things somewhat organized. And so we decided to go with it. It's gonna cost us more, but when we thought about it, given that we wanted a lift, and given who we are and what our kids and the need for garage organization, it wasn't that much more expensive than other projects around the house that have similar goals. For example, repaving the driveway was more expensive. Putting up a fence around our house was only slightly less expensive. So it's one of these annual or every other year kind of projects that you budget for and you save up for. And you don't have to be a multimillionaire <laughs> to do it. So that's what we're doing. We're putting in an American Custom Lift single post for the Mustang. All right, so um, I got the email from American Custom Lifts that the uh, lift has finished its manufacturing process, ready to be shipped from Texas. Um, so I'm gonna call the salesman with whom I've been working um, just to get the order finalized. And uh, I'm gonna try and find out what the ship time's gonna be and when we should expect it. It's gonna ship directly to my lift installer. I hope he's not out of lunch. This is Rick. Hey Rick, it's Rafi Garoyan. Oh, how you doing, Rafi? I'm right. All right. So yeah, I thought maybe it was shipping today. I thought it was sitting on the loading dock. <laughs> Apparently not. Uh, so they've got my money, and um, so I guess that means now they're gonna they're gonna button it up. It's it's not gonna come uh, standard FedEx, you know, minivan style. This is gonna be a a loading dock operation kind of thing. And um, it's gonna to ship to my installer. He'll get it off the freight truck. Um, he'll put it onto his truck and he'll bring it over to our house. So I'm hoping by, you know, 
maybe by Thursday, today's Tuesday, maybe by Thursday I'll get a heads up. And, um, you know, probably mid midweek next week, it'll be arriving uh, at my installer. And maybe by the end of next week, we'll have a new lift in the garage. I don't know. So um, that's it. Keep it posted. Okay, quick update. It is Tuesday, March 23rd. Um, it's going to be arriving this morning. I'm going to head out. Um, just to get a video of the lift arriving at Rob's shop, uh, but Rob's going to keep it at his um, shop until he can get out here. The the good news is it, it went pretty quickly. Um, the lift shipped, you know, like Friday or Saturday, and it's getting here this morning, straight from Texas, it sounds like. So uh, I'm going to go uh, see it. Downside is that Rob can't get to the install until Friday of next, Thursday of next week, April 1st. April Fool's! So um, let's hope it's not an April Fool's and that we'll, we'll have the install in place. But um, I'm going to head out, take a look at the lift, and I'll show you some video of that. So here we are at Rob's shop. And again, the reason why I did not have this shipped to my house uh, is because I, I don't have a forklift. <laughs> and, and the uh, delivery guy is not responsible for getting it off of this truck. Uh, it's, it's your responsibility or your installer's responsibility to take care of that. Um, so I made arrangements with Rob um, for him to take the delivery. Um, I, I ended up signing for it, so it, it was beneficial for me to be there. But uh, most importantly, Rob had the forklift and the warehouse space. So next step is for us to get on the schedule and uh, to get this thing installed as soon as possible. But it, here it is, safe and sound in Virginia. Okay. I'm back. Really cool. Now it's real. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I got a big lift waiting to be put in the garage now, and I'm, I'm really excited. Um, so, yeah, uh, Rob said Thursday, next Thursday, we're, we're looking at the installation. Um, one thing I, I did want to make sure, because as I was looking at the shipment, I don't know if you noticed, there's some cardboard boxes with the electronics, which got me to thinking it's got to plug into the wall. And while I have the garage wired for 220, I don't actually have the socket installed in the box. So um, my question to Rob was, do I need to wire that myself? Like, do I need to head out to Lowe's or Home Depot and get it and wire it? And he said, uh, nah, he, he thinks we're gonna be able to get it up and running without me needing to do that. And the only thing he wanted to see was a picture of the outlet, which I have just sent to him. So, um, we should be good to go. So it's um, Wednesday, March 31st, and uh, tomorrow's uh, the install day. What I've got to do now is I've got to prep the area. Uh, so everything's going to get off the wall. Yeah, we're just going to, I'm probably going to sweep it out. Uh, just get it nice and clean for the installation crew when they come tomorrow. Well, it's April 1st, April Fools. Um, I got a call from Rob this morning and uh, no April Fooling, he's coming today. I did talk to Rob about the outlet on the wall here, <laughs> there, the tower for the lift is gonna go right in front of the plug. So it might make the most sense just to hardwire it and leave it. Um, but I could also see a time when I need to like, maybe use the outlet for something and I wanna unplug it. I, I'm not getting a Tesla anytime soon. So I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah, but so I've got the 220 outlet here. I think we're gonna hardwire it just to start. And then if I need to run to Lowe's and get a plug, I can. It's gonna be a fun day. So here's Rob delivering the lift. And the thing that was striking to me the most about this was how heavy this stuff was. They had to use a crane to get it off, even stuff that wasn't that big. Um, you think maybe two guys could carry it? No, this stuff was just really heavy. And you know, that makes me feel good. I mean, this is stuff that's not going anywhere once it's in place. Uh, the bolts are, I mean, this is railroad size kind of stuff. So pretty cool. Uh, I'm so glad I had somebody uh, that was experienced doing this work. Uh, they did a great job. And just to give you a sense of how the flow went, uh, we're going to do a quick time lapse here and you can see the progress.
Ta-da, we're done, right? No. Yeah, it looks like we're done, but we're not. So something always goes wrong, right? Things were going along splendidly, really making good progress. As you saw in that time lapse, went together without a hitch. In fact, uh, Andy, one of the two installers said this it was going uh, together a lot easier than he thought it was going to. <laughs> Prescient words. <laughs> so when we got to the point where uh, everything was together, it was time to put a load on it and actually, you know, uh, raise the platform so that we could start uh, securing things from the underside of the uh, of the runways and uh, so we went to plug it in and we got remember I mentioned about the uh, the electrical outlet and I wasn't sure what to do about that uh, we ended up deciding to go with a uh, a plug in an outlet rather than hardwired in and um, yeah plugs hooked up well actually I pulled this out but it was hooked up it was all screwed in and um, yeah no power, none whatsoever. So um, we ran around the house trying to figure out, you know, what was going on. I'm not an electrician. They weren't electricians. Can't figure it out. This is a, a relatively new garage, so I'm not entirely surprised. There's no power to these outlets. These are the 220 or 240 volt outlets in, in this garage. And I've never had reason to tap into them until now. So, um, yeah, they don't have any power. I don't know why they don't have any power. I have tried everything. So I don't know what's going on. So I've called uh, an electrician. Uh, we are at a standstill. I did bring the Mustang in, as you can see, just to make myself feel better. <laughs> so I've got a, a stage for the Mustang. I just, it doesn't go up. Yeah, we're gonna wait for the electrician. Rob is gonna come back um, and, and finish the job once that's finished. Uh, I am a little worried this is starting to become more expensive for the install than I initially expected. In this area, Virginia is cheaper than other areas of the country, as I understand it, but it was going to be around $1,000 for the install. Now I got to pay for an electrician to come out. Rob has to come back. We'll see. It's going to get done. I've got a lift in the garage. I can't put a lift in the garage and like stop. So, um, but yeah. I was able to get my electrician out today, uh, which is a minor miracle. And uh, he came in and it was a simple fix for an electrician. Uh, when, when they wired the garage here, they actually never connected the feed to the breaker panel. There wasn't a spare slot for it to go in, so he's having to do some juggling. But in the meantime, we do have it hooked up temporarily. <laughs> So I feel like I feel like Dr. Frankenstein. It's alive, but um, it's cool. So we've got a lift, and it moves now. I have to wait for the electrician to come back, and I'm checking to see when Rob can come back out. Uh, but things are are looking up, pun intended. Uh, my advice to other folks in my position uh, is: before you get a lift like this make sure you've got power to the to the 240 volt. Now I understand that's easier said than done. Um, for some of you, you might have the tools to, to know if it's got power or not. For others, just preemptively call your electrician, make sure everything's good to, good to go. Uh, you don't wanna be caught uh, with a delay, which is gonna end up costing you more money, which I suspect is gonna cost me a little more money. Um, so learn from my mistake. Call your electrician if you're a homeowner and and have never used the outlet before. And since we did have some temporary power and we could get the lift raised, Rob came back that afternoon. To his credit, he came after hours and began wrapping up the lift. So uh, he began attaching the bolts that secure the runways uh, to the forks on the lift. And he even let me uh, lend a hand as best I could. Um, although there were probably some QA problems that he had to fix. but. <laughs> We got it all done. Everything was tightened down. As you can see here, I'm torquing everything to a specified uh, pressure. And uh, sure enough, here we go.
let it down just a little bit, right? Yeah, do it. <laughs> That's it. And success. You know, I started this video with this angle, and now I'm realizing it wasn't a very good angle. <laughs> Let me move over here. So success, uh, we're a day late. I should have known that installing a car lift on April Fool's would mean that it wouldn't be finished <laughs> on April Fool's. So it's uh, April 2nd and we're done. I'm gonna do a quick review on how it works um, and, and some positives and negatives. To be honest, there aren't a whole lot of negatives. So uh, we've had the lift in place for just about three weeks now. It's April 22nd and um, we've been using it and, and to be honest, we love it. I'm going to go through a review here uh, in just a minute, but before I get to that, I uh, just want to give you a quick anatomy of the lift. Uh, so the model that I got, again, this is an American custom lift, they call this the M1. They make a variety of lifts, some of them are, you know, single posts like this, some of them are more conventional four posts, they have a whole variety of, of lifts to choose from, and it comes in two different models. You can either get a, uh, what they call the 4.5, which is what this is or you can get the 6.5. The difference is size and height. So part of the, what you have to think about when you look at these lifts is what you need it to do. What kind of car are you gonna lift? How heavy is your car? What kind of car are you gonna put under it? Is there enough clearance? And also, does your garage have enough a tall enough ceiling to fit whatever car is gonna go on the lift as high up as you need it to go in order to fit the other car underneath? In our case, 70 and a half inches is perfect. Uh, when I pull um, one of our cars underneath, we have two SUVs or crossovers. We have a Rogue and a Murano. Uh, when I pull those under, there's just enough room to get them under there. So 70 and a half, uh, I found to be sufficient for most, uh, certainly all sedans, uh, station wagons, uh, for those of you who drive, still drive station wagons, um, and then uh, small to medium-sized SUVs and crossovers. Uh, again, check the manufacturer website if you're not sure about your car's height to make sure it's gonna fit under the lift. And I should note that American Custom Lifts on their website say that they will custom order and custom build these, um, these lifts if, for example, your garage uh, may not quite accommodate the uh, M1 6.5, but you do want something taller than the 4.5. They will, as I understand, uh, do a custom order for you. Um, so anyway, anatomy of a lift. Let's, we're gonna go from the ground up. Okay, so starting with the floor in the garage, obviously you're gonna need a concrete floor and the manufacturer specifications call for concrete that is 3000 PSI. It's gotta be four inches thick, uh, needs uh, steel bars or you know uh, mesh inside of it. Um, and your, your installer is gonna want to test drill to get a core sample. On top of the concrete is your column, which is this guy right here. And, or you might also call it the post. Uh, you know, conventional lifts have four of, four of these, they're smaller. Uh, so the column is also where you're gonna find your power unit. The power unit can be mounted on either side of the column, the front uh, or the rear. Um, now the power unit, uh, notably, is a 230 volt only unit. You cannot plug this guy into a standard 110 wall outlet. Uh, so it's gotta be 230 volts, similar to what your, your dryer probably uses if you have an electric dryer. Um, now, the power unit is also attached to the cylinder. And so it's kind of hard to see behind the chain there, but that's where the hydraulic cylinder is. And, um, and then you've got a chain on top of the cylinder. Uh, so you've got your power unit, you've got the cylinder inside of the column, uh, and then you've got your base. So there's your base, and it's essentially a large foot under the lift. It's what st stabilizes the lift. It creates a center of gravity so the lift doesn't fall over, uh, and it is bolted into the floor. Now the base itself uh, rises about two, well, may, just a little over three inches off the floor. Uh, that means that when you drive over it, there is a bump when you're loading your car underneath of the lift. 
Um, now, if you have a low clearance car, a lot of sports cars have low clearance and, and you don't want to risk anything, you can order these lifts with a lower profile base. It's by uh, reduced by about an inch. And um, in that case, the entire lift is lowered by an inch because it, it resides on top of the base. And again, you would do that only if you had a low clearance car that needed to go under the car that's raised on the lift and you don't want to risk uh, scraping the bottom of it in some way. Now attached to the column is the yoke and that's this guy right here. This is the piece of machinery that is holding the lift runways up and down and so the yoke is is a vital piece. It is a monster. So it, it, is, it is really heavy and it's really solid. It's attached to arms which are these guys right here. So these are essentially like forklift arms that come out from the yoke and they slide underneath of the runways. And the runways are then attached onto those arms. And uh, the great thing about these runways is that they are adjustable. So you can take these runways and depending on which car is gonna be going onto your lift most of the time, you can widen or, or uh, make them more narrow uh, depending on, on the, uh, the wheels of the car that need to go on top of the lift. At the front of the runways are wheel stops. Now, I don't think this is going to prevent you from running over top of them. I think this is more just to, if, if, you, if you make a big mistake and you aren't paying attention, you will notice that your car wants to stop. But if you're, if you're just, you know, cruising up this ramp with abandon, um, you're, these are probably not going to stop you. Uh, and then at the rear of the ramp, uh, you can attach uh, these, sorry, the rear of the runways, you can attach these ramps. And these ramps are removable. You can leave them on uh, if you want, but I like to take them off when I raise the car up, and then I will place in uh, wheel stops at the rear. And so I just kind of keep these wheel stops on the side here, and they go on when the ramps come off. Uh, so that's the anatomy of the, uh, of the lift. Now, some things to consider. Garage height I mentioned, right? So you want to make sure that your garage is able to accommodate not only the post, but also the car that's going to be going up, up to, in my case, 70 inches off of the ground. And so there's a lot of measuring you have to do. You need to figure out how tall is the tallest piece of a uh, car that you're going to be putting on top of the runways. You need to figure out how high this lift can raise and is the car going to hit the ceiling or in my case hit the light uh, or might the trunk hit the garage door when it's opened and then again you also need to measure any cars that are going to go under it to make sure that they can fit now if you're planning on parking a sedan underneath the uh, underneath the runways that may mean that the runway doesn't need to go up all 70 inches i will tell you however 70 inches is not all that high. So even in a sedan, if you're not gonna raise those runways all the, all the way, cause you don't have to in a sedan uh, underneath of it, you're probably gonna need to be very careful about hitting your head, getting out of the car. I think from, a, from an everyday comfort use perspective, raising these runways to 70 inches is ideal. You need a garage that's gonna be 11 or 12 feet in, in terms of clearance. I have an 11 and a half foot garage basically here, and it is just good enough to raise 70 inches and get um, get about a 53 inch tall Mustang uh, onto it and it, it's a perfect fit. It's like a glove. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how to actually operate the lift. This is like the fun part, right? So um, it's, it's actually really simple. Make sure it's plugged into the wall. <laughs> Make sure you have power to your outlet. Um, so I've, I've got all that done. And incidentally, with regard to the plug, one of the reasons we picked using a plug is because I do have kids running around. I don't want them trying to operate this lift, so I can unplug it to keep them from doing things they shouldn't. So consider that. If you have kids around, hardwiring the lift you know, may be more conventional, but um, being able to unplug it is very handy. And it's, it's like a medicine bottle getting that thing off of it. You gotta push in and turn. Um, so it is kid safe in a, in a way they're not going to be able to plug it in very easily. So you've got two, two things to do. You have a button up here that makes the lift go up. 
and you have a, I don't know what the technical term for this is, and, and please forgive me, I am not a mechanic, I'm a computer guy, I'm keeping the terms as technical as I can, but I know some of you guys are gonna comment and tell me I'm way wrong, so I'm gonna call this the pressure relief lever. Sounds good to me. So anyway, you've got the thing that goes, the button, <laughs> the thing, the button that makes, makes the lift go up, and then you've got the lever that makes the lift go down, right? Now there's more to it than that. Um, so I'm gonna make the lift go up. I've got it plugged in, and I'm going to press the button, and we're gonna raise the lift. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear there's some knocking that's happening. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Let me raise the lift the rest a little bit more here. Okay, I'm gonna pretend that I got the lift all the way up to all 70 inches, right? We're not done yet. The lift is not safe to, to really walk under. I need to lower the lift until it stops. Watch what happens here. It didn't go down all the way. Very interesting, how did that happen? Well, here's, here's what's going on. So that knocking uh, that you're hearing is a safety latch. There's a latch that's ratcheting up, uh, a, uh, ratcheting up a ladder, essentially. If you've ever used an extension ladder, it's very similar. So it's ratcheting up a ladder, and as it goes up, it falls into the next rung. It goes up a more, it falls into the next rung. And then when I let it down, you're relieving all the pressure from the hydraulics and you're letting the latch support the lift. And that's, that's your safety latch. So you do not want to leave this lift supported only by the hydraulics long-term. Uh, it'll, it'll degrade uh, the life of the, of the lift. So you let it down and now we're clear. <laughs> Okay, now, now that the lift has been raised and it's, I've let it down, it's resting on the safety latch. If you look under here, right here, this is uh, the safety latch cord and the lift will not go down until you pull that cord and then use the handle to lower it. So if you wanna lower the lift, you need to first relieve the pressure off of the safety latch. So I'm gonna raise the lift just a little bit. It's up. And now, if I go back under here, I can pull the cord. The hydraulics are supporting the lift at this point, so it's, you know, it's okay. And now I'm going to relieve the pressure on the hydraulics. I'm gonna push in on this lever, and down it comes. I'm gonna speed it up for you here. That's it. So that's all there is to operating uh, this lift. It's very simple. Um, and if I can do it, and I'm not that mechanical, anybody can do it. So let's talk about some pros and cons. Okay, so the first pro is the footprint. So uh, you've been seeing this blue piece of tape, right? The entire time we've been doing this project. This is the boundary or the footprint of what a four post lift would have been. Because initially we were thinking we were gonna get a four post lift until I discovered that this thing existed. So a four post lift, by my estimate, would have saved whew, probably 30 square feet of space in the garage, which may not sound like a whole lot, but it's, it's enough. Might be even more than that. I'll mark in the video what the exact square footage savings was. Um, so, in terms of real-world use, uh, you're saving a lot of room with when the lift is down, having a much larger walkway along the sides and perimeter of the lift. Um, and then when the lift is up, the posts are not going to be in the middle of your garage, which is really nice. So, uh, that's the first huge benefit. The footprint is much smaller 
uh, and just much friendlier in terms of garage organization. So that brings up the second point. And that second pro is frankly just general garage cleanliness. When you don't have a four post lift, you don't have posts in the center of your garage floor. And uh, that sort of environment tends to attract a lot of clutter. We're able to keep a lot of, a, a lot of things in the center of the garage that we need access to fr frequently. Having garage cleanliness is important to us. Um, and having a single post lift that stays out of the way is, is very helpful. The next pro is that this is a great lift to have if you have kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, um, those, kinds of, <laughs> those kinds of little people uh, that are putting a lot of foot and bike and scooter traffic into your garage. Um, we have two daughters uh, that love to ride their scooters all over the driveway and in and out of the garage. And having this lift here without four posts is, uh, it, frankly, it, it wouldn't happen if we had four posts in here. They wouldn't be able to get their bikes in and out easily. Um, and with the, the single post lift, uh, it's frankly just the only way it would work. It's just a fantastic, fantastic uh, quality of living decision that we made in getting a single post lift. Also in the pro column for the M1 uh, is the colors. So having the choice of colors is, is, a, is a great pro. Next on the lift is the lift time. So this lift has a relatively fast lift time and I'm putting it on the screen here um, and you can see exactly how fast this goes. I'm speeding it up a little bit. But it's a great lift time compared to some other lifts out there. You're not gonna be standing around waiting too long. Um, now, the, the, I, the weight of your car will probably affect how quickly the lift raises and lowers. But generally speaking, um, this is a pretty, pretty quick lift and not that loud either. Next on the lift are inclines in your garage, the gradient of the garage. Um, our, our garage, like most, is built on the slope and our slope is actually a little bit steeper than most garages. If you have a sloped garage and uh, it's a steeper slope garage, definitely talk with your salesman uh, to make sure it's gonna work for you. But in our case, uh, it worked out great. Next pro, oil changes. So I'm not a mechanic, but I do like the fact that I can change my own oil with this lift. Uh, it's very convenient to get under a car and do minor mechanical work like a, an oil change. You're not gonna be able to change your tires uh, with this lift. It's, it's uh, just runways. The tires are needed on the car to support the car on the lift. But for things like oil changes, it's great. And then the last pro that I want to mention is uh, that this lift was made in the USA. Um, I was somewhat curious as to whether certain components were made in China, but I'd say 99% of this lift was manufactured and fabricated in the USA, from the steel to even some of the electronics. Um, it, this is, a, this is a, an American lift. Now there is a, there is a Made in USA label on the other side of the lift from where I am right now, but I wanted something a little bit more obvious. So I just went online and got some vinyl stickers. And so I'm gonna put one, I think right here, um, just to give it a proper Made in USA label. And these are nice vinyl things, so this should, should last quite a while. Get it centered. There, get the bubbles out, looking good. So those are some of the positives and they're certainly not all the positives. So as you can imagine, we are very happy with the American Custom Lifts M1. It's perfect for us. Um, we have no regrets. If I had to come up with some negatives, like any product, uh, there's going to be drawbacks. And I wanna just make sure that um, if you're thinking about a purchase like this, that you go in with open eyes. So just to kind of go over a short list of negatives. The first one is going to be cost, right? That's obvious. And, you know, when you look at videos, as you probably have, of people who've installed these lifts, I'm not that kind of person, right? I don't have 
a Maserati on the bottom, and a McLaren on the top. I've got a 2007 Nissan Murano on the bottom, and a 1965 Ford Mustang um, that I bought for $5,000 in 1997 on the top. And it was probably worth a little more now, but still, I'll tell you, if you are a homeowner who has a need to store at least one more car than what your garage can typically store, and you have needs for you know organization and kids running around and bikes and you want to keep your one of the cars kind of out of the way this is a very affordable option and what i mean by that is let's do a quick cost comparison uh, because i consider this a quality of living purchase so for example painting the house uh, this is something we have to do we've gotten some quotes four grand just to paint a couple bedrooms and a few bathrooms and a main uh, foyer hallway. Um, putting up a wooden fence. We did this last year. Just a normal picket fence around our house. Almost six grand just to put up the fence with pre-treated lumber. Uh, I imagine those prices have gone up during COVID. Uh, driveway paving. We did that last year as well. Uh, our driveway was cracked and just had tree roots that had pushed it up. It was just a mess in certain parts. And, and that cost me eight grand. Eight grand to do that driveway. And then a new deck, or in our case, it's gonna be rebuilding our deck. Uh, gotten quotes on that. We're looking at about 12 grand for that. And then uh, lastly, something that is not on the horizon for us in the immediate future, but uh, one day we'd like to do it in ground pool. I've spoken with neighbors who have done it. I had one neighbor who, who spent upwards of 50 grand on their in-ground pool, which I'm sure had all kinds of water features that you know, were nice to have, like waterfalls and things. But I'm, I'm figuring minimum to do a decent in-ground pool, you're looking at 20 grand. And again, these are prices in central Virginia. I know that if you go elsewhere in the country, this stuff seems like a bargain to you. So let's take a look at the cost breakdown for the M1. Now, this is not the cheapest lift. You can get a cheap lift uh, you know, shipped to you and installed for between five and six grand. But again, as I've articulated, we didn't want that for a number of reasons, not the least of which was our children uh, running around it. So the M1, not the cheapest lift, but let's take a look at how it, how it broke down. So the lift itself came in at $69.95. And I understand that those prices uh, have probably gone up with the co cost of steel that's, that's rising uh, in the world right now. Um, so $69.95 is what the lift cost itself. Now you have to pay for shipping on top of that. Uh, this, this lift ships from Texas and depending on where you are, you're gonna pay uh, more or less. I'm in Virginia. It cost me just about $1,000. I was hoping uh, it would be cheaper than that but it, it is what it is. You know, you're, this is a freight ship deal. It's not like you're, you're going to ship this thing uh, priority mail. The installation. Now, this is where I was personally budgeting about $1,000. And in retrospect, I, I should have been wiser about that because the installer I was using uh, was not that familiar with this lift. He had heard of it, but he'd never installed one before. And that took more time than it would have if this was an experienced installer. So the installation came in uh, about $600 more than what I thought it was going to cost. The electrician, again, not an expense I anticipated. Uh, it wasn't a huge expense, but it was not an expense I was personally going to be able to get around because I'm not an electrician. I would not have been the person to um, hook up the 230 volt into the breaker panel. It's just not something that I am comfortable doing. In retrospect, uh, if you are somebody who is comfortable with that sort of thing, then you can probably save yourself the electrician money. And if you can find an installer or if you're comfortable enough in doing the installation by yourself, you can save yourself some money there too. If you can either do it yourself or find an installer who's done it before. So the grand total for the lift was just under $10,000. So now that we have a sense of what it cost me to get my lift built, shipped and installed completely, Let's take a look at how that slots in with the cost comparison. So again, here's the list and I've created an additional line item right where that M1 is gonna fit in. And so that 9849 fits right in between the driveway paving and a new deck. And I would say that is about right in terms of price. 
considering what you're getting and how it's benefiting the whole family, considering that it's going to make your life easier, and considering that it's going to keep things looking pretty nice and clean and it's going to protect part of your property, I would say that that would describe both the driveway paving and the new deck. And they're all in the same price range. So from that perspective, this is very affordable for anybody who's a homeowner and who has uh, one more car than their garage will fit. And you want to keep that car inside. You want to keep all of your cars inside. Um, it's a it's right in line. So that's a positive and a negative, I guess, right? So the cost is certainly a negative, but when you put in perspective, it's not prohibitive. Other negatives that, that some may not necessarily anticipate. I mentioned this lift was unfamiliar to my installer. Uh, he was aware of it, but he had never seen one in person. Uh, and it took him much longer to install. And as a result, I ended up having to pay him more money uh, because it took him more time. I'm not upset about that. It's just the way it is. But this this is a lift that is not ubiquitous across the country. And so if your installer is not familiar with it, uh, it may take them a little longer to install it. The voltage, 230. Not everybody necessarily has 230 uh, in their garage. Uh, so there may be some added expense running a 230 line uh, into your garage if you don't already have one. And again, you know some of the other lifts out there uh, the four post uh, lifts, some of them have 110 volt options. They'll plug into any standard wall outlet, but this one is a 230 required. And then lastly, you know, just to be transparent, some of these add-ons are, are more pricey than, than I would have expected. So for example, painting it in certain colors costs you more money. I, I guess maybe they don't necessarily always mix up the paint right away. Uh, the drip pans, you know, they were close to a hundred bucks each. Um, you could probably go out and uh, get something plastic if you wanted to. And there's other things as well. There's the ramps uh, if you need low profile ramps. But I would say the other, the other add-ons are for folks who have expensive cars and they're not going to blink uh, paying more for some of those other add-ons that are built for the expensive cars. So that wraps it up. The M1 is a great lift. And yes, it costs more money than other lifts that are out on the market. Uh, but frankly, for what you're getting, it's worth the price. It's something you can budget for like any other household project. You just have to plan ahead for it. And that's what we did. So yeah, I can't be happier with the M1. Uh, yeah, it's uh, something that we will be using pretty much every week. The quality of build is, is fantastic. It's obviously very good workmanship that went into this product. As far as the negatives go, they're not really not that insurmountable. Between the cost and you know, making sure you have a 230 volt outlet, um, and then you know the add-ons, none of that's really a deal breaker for most people. And so, really, if you can just see, see your way to budgeting for something like this, uh, you're not going to regret it. You don't have to be a Maserati. You, know? you don't have to own a McLaren or a Ferrari. You can be somebody that has a 2007 Nissan and an old Mustang. So, hope this was helpful. If you've got questions, put them in the comments. I'll try to answer as many as I can. But thanks for watching.